Religious. And that, at times, he didn't live up to what he should have been doing. Because you remember, one of the things he's famous for is he denied Jesus three times. Right there. In that time when Jesus was brought before, basically, the trials. And so, that's what Peter said. He said, I like you. And so, Jesus gave him a command. He said, feed my lambs or shepherd my sheep. Now, lambs, and of course, he's referring to other believers. Now, lambs, full-grown sheep, they need a lot of care. Do your kids need care? Do you need care? Just shake your head. Lambs, sheep need care. They need to be watched over. Basically, the, these animals, basically a shepherd, one that's feeding them, one that's looking at them, needs to be alert and courageous. Because usually for sheep, their, their basic nature is ignorance and defensiveness. You know, they don't gang up on the lion and, or, or, or a predator and go after them. What do they do? What, what do sheep usually do? What? Run. Run the other way. Or wherever the sheep in front of them is going, that's where they're going, right? They just follow. There we go. So, you know, we, we saw Maasai who would take their sheep, goats, cows out in the morning and then bring them back at night. They would watch over them, make sure if they were sick, they'd take care of them, they would do all that. Basically, this is, but this is for all Christians. And Jesus said, be my lamb, shepherd my sheep. This is for all Christians because we're shepherds to someone. Maybe to our children, family, friends, church family. We're shepherds. We are to watch our, uh, uh, for other people. Be careful in how to treat them and to take care of them. So how are you shepherding the people that God's put into your life? Are you helping them out? Are you watching out for them? Peter had his faults. And we fall, I fall right in there. We all do. Peter had his faults. But he loved Jesus. And he wasn't afraid to admit it. Now, they were in a group of disciples. He's all that. And I don't think Jesus took Peter's side. He was just talking to him in a group. Can you imagine the other disciples that were sitting there? And they're hearing Jesus ask Peter, Hey, do you love me more than these? Yeah. Feed my sheep. They're probably all sitting there. And you've probably done this in school too. Man, when I was in a classroom, I'd try and hide. Did y'all do that? I, I try and duck down behind the person in front of me. So the teacher was asking questions. I try and hide. Man, I don't want her to ask me a question. And, uh, and doggone, they would find me. But these disciples are all sitting there. How many, probably every one of them saying, man, I hope Jesus don't ask me that. I hope he don't ask me that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Because they all knew themselves. And they all knew that basically they had failed in points. Done well in some, failed in others. So they were hoping. Dear Jesus, please don't. Please, God, please don't let him ask me that question. Please, 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 I'm just right here. And so, the thing is, <laughs> the key is Peter's love for Jesus. Peter did love Jesus supremely, but perhaps not completely. And Jesus was digging down to Peter's heart and mind and soul help him to realize this. That you can love me supreme, supremely, do you love me completely? And the thing is, we need to love Jesus supremely and completely, but we also need to look out for others and help them. Let's bow our heads. That's a tough question to be asked. And we'll look at the other two questions that Jesus asked Peter next time. But, in your own self, if Jesus was sitting next to you, or you're having breakfast with Jesus, you're sitting at Max down in Holly Hill, one of the booths, and Jesus is sitting there, you're talking, just having a good time, and Jesus just looks up and says, Hey, calls you by name and says, You love me. How would you answer? How would you answer? And only you can answer. You can answer. Can we say it like Peter? Well, I like you, Lord. Can we say, I love you completely and supremely? Or, man, Lord, I've just blown it. <laughs> Don't ask me that question, please, because I'm just... Hmm. So the thing is, 
as the choir sang, come just like you are. That's what Jesus wants. He wants you to come just like you are. Because He will work in you and change you and make you what you ought to be if you will let Him do that. Karen's going to play a verse of a song. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, why don't you just thank Him right where you're at. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I am trusting you completely. And if you don't, if you never trusted Jesus Christ completely, all you have to do is say, Lord, I don't understand it all, but I know that there's no way that I can get to heaven on my own. I know my life and I'm not perfect. But Lord, I believe Jesus, you died for me on the cross. You paid the penalty for my sin. You made the way for me to go to heaven. And I'm believing in you, trusting you for that. And that's where I'm placing my faith and trust. And I thank you for giving me eternal life and salvation. And I want to live for you the rest of my time here. If you said that, I'm going to be right now here at the front, standing by this table. If you'd like to come and talk, pray, whatever you'd like to do, let's care and place.